What are we opening with? Um, Heineken Rivalry Heineken, Week? Heineken Rivalry Week. Have you week. figured out how to say that properly? Heineken Rivalry it's Week. Say it that is, ten it times does fast. not roll off the tongue. Heineken Rivalry Week. Heineken, Heineken Rivalry Week. Rivalry. I can't say rivalry. Rivalry is a hard word. Rivalry. Rivalry. I've got it. Rivalry. <laughs> R- R- it was a long week. R- <laughs> What's up, everybody? Happy Monday, Kaylin. What a rivalry week we had, huh? It was great. It was a big one. It was a big one. Uh, you were at Red Bull Arena for NYCFC Red Bulls. We I was down at your old, your old stomping grounds yeah. for the Texas Derby in Houston. Um, it was really fun. So I think our twin takeaways should uh, should obviously be about Heineken Rivalry Week, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Should I should I take? Sorry, this I'm away? still like a little fired up from last week was jacked. intense. Yeah. Jacked. But uh, yeah, start us off with your All right. takeaway. Um, so, as I said, I was down in Houston for the Texas Derby. Uh, this was it's, this was my first Texas Derby, right? And so I was, I was hanging out with all the fans ahead of time. And, it, I mean, this is a real deep-seated thing, right? Like, these fans, like, it was, I mean, there was, there was some friendly banter, but you can tell, like, there's a, it's a little contentious. Like, they seem to come together they, over Bun B, though. Oh, oh Bun B was fan. Fantastic. Can I just tell you guys That's what cool. a cool dude. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, but so this game, this game ends in a 1-1 draw. Felt like a very fair result, uh, just based on what I saw on the field. Really great for Dallas to have Mauro Diaz back in that in that starting eleven. But you know, this is a fun. This is now that Houston. I mean, they're both at the top of that table now. You know, yeah. and so you get this sense that like there was that was this mattered. This really, really mattered. There's a lot into this Texas Derby, so it must have been fun for you getting the play. Yeah, it was cool. Games. But I, I, you're right. Now it matters where both teams are back near the top of the Western Conference. Potentially going to see each other in the playoffs. So these matchups mean a little bit more because you want to assert your dominance in these ones. Uh, Houston would have liked to get the three points. Yeah, didn't happen. Sure. But uh, let's move on let's move to my on. takeaway. <gasps> the New York Derby. New York is blue. New York is blue. Whoa. I'm sorry to Whoa. all the Red Bulls fans out there. Uh, being at this game, BWP I was watching closely. I've almost never seen him look more frustrated than in this one. Mm. And for good reason. There was no service to him. Uh, I think the Red Bulls finished with one shot on frame all day. Uh, there was really no outlet. There was no options for them yeah. going forward. They ended up resorting to some long balls in the second half coming from behind. Um, I think these two teams, Red Bulls need to be careful because yeah. I think there's a shift happening yes, here. Where it, it felt like that. It felt like a, a really, a, you kind of felt that that sort of seismic like, whoop, all right. Yeah, well, NYCFC, we're if you look at the changes they have, Yangel Herrera yep. and Ring in the middle, that used to be the Red Bulls area of dominance in the center of the park. Now those two come in, really made it tough on them on the mm-hmm. day. And then if you look at some of the other additions that NYCFC have made, they've paid off. Yep. Rodney Wallace mm-hmm. you know, gives you an option out yep. wide. Sean Johnson now called up to the Gold awesome. Cup team. Happy Shout out him. to Sean. Uh, and then Ben Sweat. Ben Sweat with his first goal, man. A guy they found from the NASL picked up a goal and an assist in this one. Love it. So really cool. everything that the uh, that NYCFC has done has been working so far. You have to give them a ton of credit on the yeah, day. Yeah, that was that team. was super exciting. All right, and we have to talk about Portland, uh, Seattle. Obviously, this was the the final match of Heineken Rivalry Week. Looked like Portland was gonna escape with uh, with all three points, but Clint Dempsey was like. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. I got I got something to say about that. His uh, his header in extra time gave them the uh, the two two draw, so they both take home a point. Clint Dempsey now has nine goals against Portland. He likes he, he likes big games. He likes those big games. He likes big games. He said so after the match as well, and you can tell he gets up for these ones. You know he even though he got left on the bench this one of course congested fixtures. They played in New York in that rainy match uh, just a week ago, so. They give him a rest and he comes on and, and comes up good in the end. Also, let's give a shout out to Roman Torres. Yeah! Because he serves in that ball. Sure did. So maybe yes. a super sub or push him to a right winger <laughs> late in matches. Let big Roman get, <laughs> get up and get down that, that body front. in there. Get yeah. that big body in there. It was a nice there. service in the well, box. Like and uh, I liked what uh, Caleb Porter said after the match. He uh-huh. actually, that's the right way to challenge your team. He mm-hmm. said, hey, we're going to always play well. We have good players. We're going to play a good brand of soccer, but yeah. we need to really come together as far as our mentality late in games to not uh, give up late leads. So it'll be interesting to see how they respond this coming week. Woo, lived up to the hype, man. Good rivalry week, yeah, I loved weekend. it. Okay, so we talked about rivalry week, but there was also some some other news um, out of MLS. So, so the Quakes, they beat RSL 2-1, but then yesterday it's announced that Dom Kinnear is out. He will be replaced by Chris Leach. Um, he was formerly the technical director. I don't believe they're giving him the interim tag. I think they've just given him 
the head coaching position. And Kaylin, I know you've played under Dom. Um, you've got a relationship with him. The Quakes, you know, they're one of these teams, they started out the season really well, kind of flying high, and then kind of stumbled a little bit. What I'm I'm very intrigued to how get you, your take on how this. How do you think I on feel? This, on this timing. I don't know. How I'm do you the, think I I'm feel? The, this, is your, this is your platform, sir. You know, the timing seems strange, right? They just had a 2-1 win over RSL, 5-3-2 mm -hmm. and two over their last games in all competitions. They're in, sitting in fifth place right now. Fifth it's place. It's not like they're, you know, bottom of the, of the table. No, for their, for their payroll to be in fifth place with a chance to move up uh, late in the season. Uh, Tommy Thompson has emerged, has mm -hmm. played in all but two games this year. Nick Lima, as yeah. well, has developed fast, potentially the Rookie of the Year, so they've got some good young talent. Um, so the timing of this seems strange, you know. Uh, at best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I would say if you look at the best managers in MLS history, uh -huh. Bruce Arena, Siggy Schmidt, Dom Kinnear. Yep. So if you're the Earthquakes, there's some pressure on you uh, to make this change work. And pressure on Chris Leach, of course, coming in now. That's a tough position to replace a legend. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays in the locker room and beyond, but a lot of pressure. And if you look at two of those names in the top three all mm -hmm. time, two of those coaches are unemployed now. Yeah. So uh, that's something to watch as well. Um, but yeah, a, a strange decision here and, and something I think that's actually put more pressure on Intriguing. the Intriguing. Yeah. Intriguing stuff. All right, well, let's get back to the MLS action out in Columbus. A big 4-1 win for the crew over uh, Montreal. And let's talk about Kakuta Manning, okay? So he gets traded from Vancouver goes to Columbus. He had gotten the call up for, for the U.S. men's national team, so things seemed to be going well for him. And then kind of gets hampered by some injuries, not really finding his groove, and Columbus scores his first goal for them. And uh, it was just, he's such, a, he's such a nice guy. He's a fun <laughs> player. I was really, really happy to see this. Yeah, I like Kakuta, of course. He's had a strange year. I think um, you have to be a little bit careful. His career trajectory seems to be um, wavering a little yes. bit. You know, he, yes. he, based on talent, he should not be on the bench. Right. You know, he needs to be a star player for these teams. And uh, But he comes on and does a good job here getting forward. I also think you have to give Ola Kamara a lot of credit. Yeah. Little uh, rollback to him, mm -hmm. unselfish there, and a great finish for him as well. So Ola Kamara, uh, I think a guy for me, uh, should be on that all-star team as well. A, a team to watch for, yeah. We'll, we'll watch. get to that. We'll get to that. Um, okay, there were some pretty goals this weekend. One of my favorite goals, Ike Opara. Oh my goodness, for <laughs> Sporting KC, they get the 2-1 win over the Galaxy. This was so great, right? Because I guess, I mean, he's like this big imposing dude, like such an imposing presence in the box. Beasler sends in that free kick, lets it bounce, and just like the timing of this bicycle kick was so impeccable. He just buries this thing, it was so fun to watch. Just kept watching it. Yeah, no, that was, that was probably my favorite moment it was great. of the weekend. Uh, it was so awesome. It was awesome. I actually want to get Ike to be a correspondent for this weekend MLS. Can I stump for this right now? Absolutely. I Ike's got one so of the best personalities. Can we get Ike to send in some uh, camera footage just from his phone, just on road trips, telling me what these guys are up to? Mm -hmm. I want to get Ike. He's, he needs he to is, be on this. He's so cool. We need oh, him God. on the show. I would love that. We got to get Ike. Come on. Ike for Someone, this week in MLS. Us. Ike for this week in MLS. Okay. Yes. Um, so another another person we have to talk about, and I'm oh I'm so sad. I'm so sad we have to talk about the Chicago Fire again because <laughs> yeah. you know oh man you hate doing I that. hate talking yeah. about the Fire. A huge. 4-0 win for them over Orlando. David Akam with the hat trick, his first career hat trick. His first goal. Oh my God. So special, right? Even the setup to this thing, right? I mean, it was just, it was such a beautifully executed goal. Well, the thing with this, oftentimes you see a guy kind of like redirect it, yeah. but this wasn't a redirection. No. He actually has to put pace on the ball. So he goes straight with uh, his heel and gets it flushed. That's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you could see him buzzing from there. I mean, oh. three goals. Just steps up and smashes the penalty kick on the last one. It was, and then of course Nikolic gets another goal, guy, not to miss out. This is Chicago Fire. Just they're flying this right now. This team is for they're real. They're feeling it. Yeah. They are feeling it. They, they are. are feeling it. Um, okay, and then we've got to we'll, we'll take it out to Philadelphia. The Union taking on on DC. <laughs> DC just can't cannot buy a goal, but a lot of that had to do with the play of Andre Blake, yes. who came up pretty darn big in, in this one, had that big PK save at the end of the game, and then there was another chance right at the end uh, that, that he saved it, but yeah, you just gotta kind of, DC just must be like, what, okay, oh, what, what yeah. more, what more can we do here? And Fafa Picault, one of my favorite names mm -hmm. in MLS, Fafa. <laughs> gets a nice goal off the cross from Bedoya, uh, nice finish the back, uh, you know, from the back post there. Uh, Fafa is one of the faster players in the league too. Yes. 
He's got wheels. He's got some serious wheels. I was texting uh, Jeff Curtin, Jim Curtin, the younger brother, uh -huh. and I was like, yo, this guy can really burn. He's like, it's serious. Yeah. And for you to say yeah. that. Kalen Carr. Oh, I used to have a little. You got some motor. Right. You got some motor yeah. back there. Back in my day. Oh, all right. So you talked about um, the All-Star game. Guys, you can still vote. You can still vote for your players. That game is coming up August 2nd in Chicago. Download that app, vote for your players. Also, Kaylin, a bunch of guys who will probably be on that all-star roster also getting a call up for the Gold Cup. Gold Cup roster. Yeah, Bruce was has announced. been finally listening to me. He as far has. As he has a lot of the guys that we've discussed get get named. Christian named. Roldan. Christian Roldan, Dom Dwyer, Sean Johnson, Sean who Johnson. we mentioned, uh, Bill Hamid. Dax is on there. Really happy to see to see Dax. Um, this is it's a it's a young it's sort of a nice like hybrid mix of, of of new guys and and sort of some yeah. some veterans. Helen Acosta, Miazga, some names that guys want to see taking a bigger role. And this is a cool opportunity I think for this tournament because it's not just some of the names that you normally see with the national team. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys are going to get to play bigger roles. Can Kellen Acosta not just be a player that's a starter on the team, but yeah. can he now take next step to help lead this group? Because he's played in the Azteca. He's yep. played in these bigger at environments now. And, and done well. Yes. And done well. So now with the Gold Cup, can he take a bigger role? He's a guy I want to be watching um, during the next month. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm going to be covering this. I can't wait. You're going to hit the I'm road, doing, huh? I'm doing, I'm doing like a road trip. Going to Nashville, going to road trip all the way down to Tampa. It's going to be fun. She's everywhere, folks. You guys, I live in New York. I don't have a car, and I'm excited to drive. It's going to be great. Watch out. Watch out. I know. <laughs> God, everyone's like, whoa. Don't want to see these New Yorkers whoa. on the road. Nah. Clear it out. Clear nah. it out. Kaylin, I've got some good news, buddy. Really? Yeah, I do. Look what, what is I found. it? Look what I found. Oh. We got the button back. We got it back. We got the button back. Where was it? Um, I'm not going to name names, but I will. Kyle Green. You think that you can steal this button and I won't know about it, but I found out and I found it on your desk. So Is Kyle Green the guy who sits um, like a couple desks mm -hmm, over? Mm -hmm. he's that got, would be the one. He's that got would, cool he's, hair. He's, he's the culprit. Really good hair. Great but he's also sneaker a thief. game too. Also a thief. Okay. So yeah. Just, Kyle. Just saying. We just see you, bro. Saying. Leave our button alone. Uh, why don't you do the honors? Okay. Did you yeah. see that? Ooh. Yeah. I felt the table shake. Yeah, I know. Simon coming in hot. All what? Right. Okay, what was your did you see that? Uh, mine was Joseph Martinez. <laughs> Atlanta gets the 1-0 win okay. over Colorado Rapids. Uh, Joseph Martinez was going into a battle with Tim Howard for it seemed like the better part of this game. Tim was able to come up good until Joseph does a nice little turn, good composure, mm -hmm. finishes it. But the part that I liked was he jumps up and almost lights himself on fire. <laughs> Saw that! MLS had a great Woo! photo of the thing happening where he's like, he's uh... got this look like, oh. <laughs> Maybe this. That's a good one. And I've been at that Atlanta stadium, and uh -huh. I was hanging out kind of by the fire pit, uh -huh, uh -huh. and a cop came over to me and was like, "Bro, you, you might want to." Wanna... Which is good because they score a lot of goals. Yeah, they do. And he's got seven goals in 423 minutes. That's just like absurd. Ridiculous. That is absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. That's All right, that was goals. a good one. Yeah, I like that. Okay, yours. Okay, so my did you see that? We're gonna take it back to that Philly DC game, and this is something I have never seen happen before. Okay, so Lucho Acosta gets call for a red card for um, taking down Harris Madunian, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, and because it looked like he kind of pulled him down and then maybe kicked him, I don't know, it was hard to tell. <laughs> but then Madunian goes to the ref and he was like, nah, didn't kick me. Didn't like, me. Did, and, and so they rescinded the red card and after the game, he talked about it. And he was just like, "Look, I'm an honest guy. Like, I don't. I'm." And I, I was like, Whoa. "Would you do that? You'd seem like the no. type." No, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was Are quick. you kidding? No. <laughs> do you see that post? She's no. in that like. You get that no call. No like, chance. Come on, you got yeah. You know, like it was just. I, I mean, you'd be on the ground grabbing your face. Like, oh, he kicked me. He kicked me. Oh, <laughs> oh, the pain. No, but like so much credit yeah. uh, to this guy. He's just you keeping it, I keeping it 100, but keeping it real. Was like, dude. No you know kick. what I did like about it too in the post game. Uh, in the post game, uh -huh. they ask him about it, and he also says, "I hope Felipe was watching from Red Bulls." <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see when these two Zing. match up next time. Zing. What happens there? He's like, "I am a man of honor," <laughs> and now he's like, "Yo, Felipe." Yo, Felipe. What's up? Yeah. What is up? Yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah, I've just never, I've never seen anything like it, yeah. and I was just kind of like head scratching. I was like, "This is really weird." Jim like, Curtin, cool. talk to your boy. Don't let him. You know. We'll take the red, just, take we'll the, keep the honor. I know, far, I know, I know, I respect it, but man. Jeez, it'd be nice to be a on? man up, right? Right, right. Well, oh. All right. Kaylin, 
That's all we got, man. That's it. Yeah, that was it. It was a big week, though. You guys, I hope you enjoyed Heineken Rivalry Week, because we sure did. We get did. in those comments. Uh, tell us what we miss. You always do. I'm sure we're going to get some hate from the Minnesota fans and, you know, all oh that. Oh, my gosh. But, I got some know. serious hate from questioning oh. Christian Ramirez on yes, Extra Time Radio. I know. Listen. Guys, I like, I really like Christian Ramirez. Uh -huh. I feel like he's got a uh -huh. shot with the national team. I need to give Minnesota some love. Right. And I gotta get a, I have to give a shout out to my soccer beach bros because they've been asking me to give them a shout out forever. And Who's I'm, that? They're, they're like these guys I follow on Instagram. They're awesome. They do all these tricks on the beach and stuff. And they okay. sent me a sweet t-shirt and they're the best. And I love oh, them. Soccer beach bros. I love you guys. Yeah, send, there it is. Send There's gear. your shout out you finally. Shout out. Um, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Get in those comments. We'll see you next week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you just saw on This Week in MLS, and why wouldn't you, then hit like, subscribe, watch all of our other content. We've got episodes of BTW and The Movement. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. Heard, I've, heard, I've, heard, that's a good I've heard that's a good show. I love that show. Quality content for you guys. Check out our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe. Please like us.